We're 10 months out from the Olympics, give or take. What is your immediate task at hand in the short term? And then how do you look at the big picture? The immediate task is to qualify for Rio. We've already had one chance and we fell one position short. We uh, competed well at the World Cup and came one win shy of winning that tournament. And if you get first or second at the World Cup, you get Olympic berth. We got third, so we our next chance will be in January. And that'll be our zone. It's called the North and Central American Zone, Caribbean Zone, NORSECA for short, but we'll have the NORSECA Olympic qualifier. It involves four teams, USA, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, and Canada. And we don't know the exact dates of that yet. We don't know the site, uh, which country will host it yet. But it'll be sometime in the first half of January, and that's our task. That sounds so volleyball-like, though. We got this big tournament, and you're going to the Olympics if you win it, but we're not telling you where it is and when it is yet. Uh, USA has a significant interest in hosting it, but there are a number of challenges that go along with that and a number of costs that go along with that. So it could be in the USA or it might be in Puerto Rico or Dominican. So we'll, uh, we'll learn as we go. Obviously you'd prefer it were at home. We um, wouldn't mind that. None of the four teams would mind hosting. Right. Now, um, correct me if I'm wrong, that's not the last chance. After that, there is one more shot, should you You are qualify? correct. Yeah. There is one more level, one more chance of Olympic qualification, and uh, one more chance for the second place team in that zone Olympic qualifier, and a separate one more chance for the third place team in that Olympic qualifier, and those chances for the second and the third place teams happened in May of 2016. That'll be getting close to make travel plans. Exactly. Uh, um, correct me if I'm wrong. So, so this past summer, with, with two different rosters, like for example, one at the Pan Am Games, one playing against China in that four-match series, you used two different rosters and had really, really good results, and then took a team somewhat combined to Japan and mm -hmm. had, had a disappointing result. Is that fair enough to say? Uh, it is fair to say. Um, again, the disappointment is losing one match. Mm -hmm. If we had, uh, we lost in five to Serbia and we lost to Russia, a team that we've beaten plenty in the past. If we win either of those matches and we were close in lots of ways, we turn, we turn a disappointing World Cup, a disappointing bronze medal into the best season USA has ever had because previous to that with lots of rosters and essentially forming two teams we uh, we won the Pan American Cup we battled well with China in the USA Cup we won the Pan American Games simultaneously with winning the Grand Prix and Grand Prix Finals which was an honor and a privilege to be able to play that in our country first time we've ever done that in Omaha and then when we put it all together we were certainly capable of winning World Cup and one win short of winning that tournament a tournament we've never won before so essentially had a really nice season and two losses in World Cup one too many when I saw you in San Bernardino, I don't know if you remember this, after you played the Chinese team, and I said, well, I'll see you in Omaha. And you looked at me and said, good. And I said, no, no, I mean, I'll see you there in December for the women's championship. I'm not going to make it for that. I knew I was going to be on vacation. And uh, you looked at me like, what the hell's wrong with you? You're not coming to that one. But that was pretty cool, though, to know that that area is so supportive and, and responds so well to you guys being there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, the Omaha Sports Council and everybody involved with that, it was fantastic. We rarely get to play any event of any significance on U.S. soil. That's just the way it is on the women's side. The men, because of a little different format of playing home one weekend, away another weekend with each of three different teams, three home and away weekends, they get to do that a lot in World League. We don't really get to do that. The only time we get to is USA Cup when we hosted Japan two years ago, Brazil last year, and then China this year. We brought three really good teams in, so that was great to play on U.S. soil. But this was another level to get to host Grand Prix Finals Week in Omaha mm -hmm. uh, in the same venue that some great uh, weekends of volleyball have happened, including coming up in December, the Final Four of the NCAA, and a, a, um, a, an epic 
semi-final round and final round in 2008 when Penn State had come in and not had lost, they hadn't lost a single set of volleyball and then played to five with, uh, with what was essentially the, the home team, Jordan Larson's Nebraska team, and so just epic volleyball there, and so it was great to be a part of that. Um, going in now and looking at those rosters, I'm real curious, I, I know you have a talent pool that's going to be roughly 25 people to pick 12, give or take, maybe a little less than that. We had close to 30 mm -hmm. in the gym yeah. this year, uh, 29 to start the year, and we will need to whittle that down to 12, assuming we qualify for Rio, right. which is not done yet, so I'm not assuming that. we got a lot of work to do. Well, I'm, all right, for the, for the purpose of our interview, though, we're going to assume that you are, because I have you to You get to yeah, assume that, I don't have to assume that. Right, exactly. But how do, how do you, um, when it comes time to it, for, for example, when you pick the next team that will compete in January, and, and you weigh how somebody did in the Pan Am games versus how somebody did on, on the other team, and, and, and how, how are you able to quantify it? Or is it a matter of also bringing them back in the gym and deciding who's hot at the time? And you know, it's, it's got to be really difficult. It is not easy. Uh, that's one of the challenging parts of this job. And the fortunate parts, we have lots of tough decisions to make. Just about every other team in the world would love to have that kind of problem of, oh, we have too many for True. this. So uh, it's, I don't have to work hard to remind myself of how fortunate we are to have the deep talent pool that we have. And then when we get to major competitions, the challenge is to uh, try to form the best team of 12 if it's a tournament like the Olympics or 14 under most other circumstances. It's never an easy decision. There's never anything that you can just quantify and make it a simple decision. There is no such thing as a, as a simple decision because so many factors come into play and we revisit those issues a lot over the course of four years.